Yeah. yeah. So when Leslie did War of the Roses, he had an opening for a Foley editor and he said, he contacted me saying, hey, would you like to do it? And I was not in the union yet, mm -hmm. but I had done enough stuff that I had my days. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> right. And so that's kind of how I got in there. It was, uh, and then from War of the Roses, I did Ghost next. And that's where I met Cece. That was at Paramount. And then I started doing Paramount shows. And it just, it's really like just getting to know people. It's just getting yeah. to know people. And, and the whole time I was really just so excited to, to do whatever I was doing. It was sure. so much fun to me. I just like threw myself into it hundred <laughs> percent. That's pretty much what I did at the time. And that era is when I started at Weddington too. It started around 88. And I I'm trying to remember. I distinctly remember you I coming by. There. I yeah. distinctly remember you coming by and visiting Stephen and you gave him a dat of guns or something that you had recorded or some oh, such thing. I? Okay. I think so. Yeah. And he immediately came down and handed it to me to <laughs> put in the library at the time. I did. I was, that's one of those things I talked about doing for free. And I don't remember when this was, when was scissor hands? Cause I think scissor hands was about to come in uh, 90 or 91 around in there. Yeah. yeah. So it must've been around there. And I was, Steve had a student film or a free thing he was helping out on that he had me do. And he I had just a remember few. He had a few I was definitely. cutting. I, and to me, it was just like, yeah, to be able to cut at Weddington, even though it was a freebie, I was like, yeah, all over it. And I met Steve and I met, I think it was Dave Stone was there, right? Yeah, like, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was, was we were all. I met a lot of you and uh, yeah. man, was Ron Bartlett mixing in the. In the little 24 track room that we yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of these that was, people. Stephen was quite proud of saying it was the smallest Dolby approved dub stage in town. <laughs> <laughs> and I also remember um, there was a scene where somebody like, it was kind of a weird thing. They pulled their eye out and then stuck it back in. And I went to Steve and like, I can't find anything in the library for I, right? For I, oh, like, I don't know what to use for that. Yeah. And he just I, looks at me and he goes, well, I've got try mud footsteps. <laughs> and, I, and it sort of hit me then like, wow. <laughs> so, and one of the things that I think like mistakes that I make that a lot of people make is trying to be too literal. Yeah, yeah. Right. So in this business, you got to think more about what, what else sounds like that? Like what sounds like the sound I want and not look exactly for what you're looking for? We've had plenty of discussions about that here. And I, I really, yeah, okay. I really yeah. appreciate that. I love that. No, <laughs> I, I definitely want to hear more about that sort of thing because that's, yeah, it's like a rookie mistake. You go to the real thing. Right. And it doesn't, and like, you know, we've had several Foley people on too, who like know very well, not to necessarily start with the, the hero prop from the film, because it's probably made out of plastic instead of, whatever it's mm -hmm. supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very early lesson that I like to. Yeah, and how many times do you go record the actual car and it's like, yeah, that's nothing. not so interesting, right? Yeah. It's, not, yeah. it's not really what you want. Or, so, or uh, you don't treat it like it's an element of the story. Like there's that great uh, Randy Tom clip that I, an episode of Sound Bites here in the museum talks about. I think it was in that, that Lucasfilm fan club thing where he talks about, you know, well, here's a car, we need sound. And so they just add a car sound. He said, no, 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 you don't understand. This is the villain's car. It's got a sound right. threatening, you know, and then you, oh, okay. You know, it's, that's, that's always a good lesson. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Men in Black. Uh, what, uh, you were one of the sound, one of the sound designers. Well, that was a different kind of thing. Um, yeah. Another uh, person, another roommate person I met at USC mm -hmm. um, that I was roommates with, uh, the Darren, Ed, and Van Ling, and I were all in the same when we were at school in the same room. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, apartment, we shared apartment, rented apartment together. And so Van had done some alien language stuff for um, alienation. And um, so he had, uh, I, it was through him that he asked me to do the men in black stuff. Um, so it was supposed to be like, I would come up with uh, the languages for a couple of the aliens. I know Skip Leafs, they did a ton of stuff on that. He oh, was sure. the main supervisor and I didn't really get a chance to interact with him very much. I did uh, interact with Barry a little bit to playing some of this stuff back. Uh -huh. um, and I, I had done a little bit of pitching and I had the, the, Lex, the, the box there that I could change the pitch for and he came in and I had pitched one of the, there's two aliens sitting at the table and I had to come up with their language and their dialogue and I had pitched one of them up a little and one down a little and he goes, it's a comedy and I pushed <laughs> it all the way up and pulled the other one way down for him. So uh, That's funny. <laughs> that was fun. But uh, yeah, and then Mikey, the alien early on, I did sort of as a guide 
but they ended up using it, which is really cool because that's uh, my voice in there. Um, oh, that's cool. That was that was a lot of fun. 